So once again, good morning to all of you. This morning, I want to just share continuously about the second coming of the Lord. And um, last two Sundays, we heard about how we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. And this morning also, I want to share the same thing, how we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. And um, in last two weeks messages, I shared mainly two points. Firstly, I shared we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord by sanctifying us and overcoming every spiritual slumber. And secondly, I share that we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord by involving in God-assigned mission over our life. We all have a ministry, so we need to actually involve in that ministry so that we will be not only ready for the coming of the Lord, but also we will have a treasure in heaven. And this morning, I want to continue the same topic, talking about how we need to be an overcomer to be ready for the coming of the Lord. And if you read Revelations, it very clearly says, Lord is going to give eternal life, heaven, the new Jerusalem for conquerors, overcomers. So we need to be an overcomers. As a Christians, as a believers, we need to be overcomers to be ready for the coming of the Lord. And basically, I will just take you through revelations and some other passages and explain to you how we all can be a conquerors. And before I begin, just let me just remind you from Revelation chapter 5, verse number 5, very clearly says that Jesus himself is the conqueror. He conquered the sin, he conquered the death, he will con he conquer the devil, and even at the end, he will throw away all the demonic kingdom and bring this world under total reign of God. So Jesus is the conqueror. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we say amen to that? Jesus is a conqueror. He is our conqueror. Amen. And then we can see in Revelation very clearly says every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ is a conqueror. Amen. And if you read especially Revelation chapter 2 and 3, then you will see seven letters that John wrote to seven churches in Asia Minor. In all those churches, Jesus gave them, a, uh, in all those letters, Jesus gave them a message. What was the message? You need to be a conqueror for the coming of the Lord, to share the eternal blessing. Dear church, I want to encourage you this morning. We are called to be conquerors. Then only we will be able to share eternal blessing. If you read chapter 2 and 3, then it is very clear. Eternal blessing is for conquerors. Eternal blessing is for overcomers. Let me just, I won't be able to read all the verses, but let me read at least one, one or two verses for you. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 7. It says, he who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, and which is, the, which is in the paradise of God. So very clearly it says, the one who conquers, one who overcomes everything, he is going to get in the tree, access to the tree of life. He is going to get the access to the paradise. So everyone will not get access to heavenly blessing. Everyone is not going to get eternal blessing or eternal kingdom. Only those who are conquering, conquering Christians, conquering followers of Jesus Christ will get eternal blessing. Hallelujah. And if you read all those seven letters, you will see the blessing, the promises for conquerors. What are the promises for the conqueror? Revelation chapter 2 verse 11 says, One who conquer, conquer, conquers will not be hurt by the second death. Second death basically talks about the eternal punishment and or the hell the lake of fire so i want to tell you that the conquerors will not have the second death they will not have the eternal punishment revelation chapter 2 verse 17 if you read you will see 
conquerors will be gifted by hidden manna of God. They will be gifted a, a stone with their name in heaven. And Revelation chapter 2 verse number 26 onwards if you read, you will see conquerors will be given authority over the nation to rule over this nation. So they will have authority. And Revelation chapter 3 verse number 5 says, conquerors will be clothed in white garment and their, their name will will not removed from will not be removed from the book of life and father god will confess their name jesus will confess their name before father and revelation chapter 3 verse number 12 says the conquerors will be the pillars of the temple of god hallelujah and then you will see revelation chapter 3 verse number 21 and the conquerors will be granted on the throne of God, they will be allowed to sit with you know, God in His throne. Amen. And then Revelation chapter 21 verse number 7 says very clearly that those who are conquering, those who are conquer, those conquerors will have access to eternal heaven or new heaven and new earth. Dear church, I want to remind you this morning, we should be conquerors to access this eternal blessing. We should be conquerors, amen, hallelujah, to have these promises of eternal blessing. If we are not conquerors, we are not going to get any of these conquerors. So let me, let, let me emphasize to you, if you want to be ready for the coming of the Lord, then you should have a life of conquerors. You should overcome things. You should conquer things. And those people are going to get eternal blessing. And who are the conquerors? What is the meaning of the word conqueror? And if you look into the Greek word that used for conqueror, then it will have, you will see three meanings for that word. First of all, this word used in the context of military. And if you know about military, those soldiers will go into the battlefield with their weapons, with their courage, with their tactics. And then what they will do, they will enforce the victory over the enemy. They will defeat the enemy. The same way, we don't have any physical war with anybody, but us uh, Christians, we need to defeat every demonic weapon that fashion against us, every demonic strategies to stop our Christian land. We need to overcome and conquer and our greatest enemy who is Satan and unseen. Dear church, I want to remind you, we should conquer the demonic powers. We should conquer the sin. And then this word nikavo or the, con the word conqueror is used in the context of you know, uh, sports competition or musical com music competition in the Greek culture. In those contexts, the word is used to one who win one who comes first in that competition so basically it talks about perseverance or endurance in those sports arena dear church in christian journey christian faith journey is compared as a race in the bible we need a lot of endurance endurance to you know, keep our faith and and touch our finishing point and those who are conquerors will overcome every hindrances and endure this journey and will reach the finishing line conquerors are people who who have a perseverance who have endurance who will run this race and successfully complete and who are the conquerors thirdly this word is used for uh, referring the faithfulness especially in the context of persecution if you read apocalyptic writings coming from maccabian period onwards you will see this word is used for people who are faithful for their fame jewish people were persecuted by hellenistic people for their fame but those faithful jewish people went through the persecution they never ever compromised their faith so this word conqueror refers faithful faithful people they preserved the faith they overcame you know overcome all the and the persecution all the trials all the temptations and preserve their faithfulness towards uh, you know, jesus christ who are the conquerors conquerors are people who overcome every demonic strategies even very you know person demon and conquerors are people who endure in their faith and and complete that you know faith race and conquerors are people who are faithful conquerors are people who enforce the victory till the end conquerors are people who overcome sin and devil and this world and keep faithfulness to the lord 
till their uh, till, till till the finishing point of their faith journey dear church this morning i want to remind you god is calling each one of us as conquerors uh, so that we can, he can give us the eternal blessing and remaining time i want to share three points and especially those three points will help us to understand how we can be conquerors how we can be conquerors amen first of all when you look into revelation chapter 2 and 3 and if you want to be conquerors then we need a life of repentance life of repentance and if you read those seven letters that john wrote for those seven uh, churches in asia minor except two churches all the five churches jesus gave this message repent 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 hallelujah church we need to know conquerors are people who keep the holiness conquerors are people who overcome sin conquerors are people who overcome every demonic strategy against our faith so that's why if we don't have repentance in our life we cannot be a conqueror let me also tell you that heaven is not for sinners heaven is for holy people heaven is for people who have no stain in their life and god is holy without holiness we will not be able to see god dear church if you want to be a conqueror you need to deal with your sin you need to repent and you need to preserve holiness then you will be a conqueror and what is repentance all about repentance has few aspects first of all repentance is feeling sorry for our sin we need to feel a sorry a grief within our heart about our sin and secondly once we feel sorry for our sin we confess that sin before the lord we come before our lord jesus ask him him forgiven us confessing our sin before the lord asking forgiveness for our sin and thirdly we take a firm decision and commitment saying that i will not do this sin anymore i am saying goodbye to this sin and fourthly we take a firm decision that today onwards i will follow jesus christ i will obey him these four aspects involved in 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 any kind of repentance dear church we all need to live a life of repentance on daily basis and i want to remind you this church last four or five sundays we are hearing the message of repentance from various people i think the spirit of god is clearly speaking to our church this is a season we need to turn back to god we need to say goodbye to our sin we need to wake up ourselves and complete our holiness and perfection in jesus christ so that we can be a conqueror and we can be ready for the coming of the lord i want to just you not know, take you to these five churches where jesus instructed them to repent and five these churches i will not get into the details but i want to just run through those five churches and let uh, let you explain that what are the areas those church those churches need to repent first of all ephesus church and jesus asked ephesus church to repent from from uh, uh, the cold love they have let me just read revelation chapter 2 verse number 4 onwards but i have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first remember therefore from where you have fallen repent and do the work you did at the first if not i will come to you and remove your lamb stand from its place unless you repent jesus gives a clear warning to ephesus church what is the warning? you need to repent if you don't repent what is going to happen your very existence is going to affect very faith is going to affect your lamb stand will be removed dear church repentance is not an option for people who are preparing for the coming of the lord repentance is a must we need to repent otherwise we cannot be conquerors and this church was asked to repent from their you know they 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 for they called love and this church had a fiery love for jesus christ but unfortunately over the time they lost their first love and they are fallen from the first love and they they are not doing the what they used to do in the beginning of their faith journey i do not know about your personal life 
But let me ask you, when you are born again, you remember those initial days, initial months, initial years, where you had a fire for God. You preserved your holiness. You prayed. You took a, a great effort in your life to walk with Him, to love Him, to serve Him. Do we have the same fire today? If we don't have the same fire, I want to tell you the Spirit of God invite every one of us to repent and come back to the first love. Over the years, I have seen many believers develop a very cold love for Jesus Christ. There is no love at all sometimes for Jesus Christ. The spirituality is becoming a ritual. Prayer become a burden. Reading the Bible become boring. I want to tell you that if that's a, that's a science that we see in our life, probably this is a time we need to repent and turn back to our first love, dear church. And secondly, if you read the church, Church, uh, the, uh, read about the church in Pergamum. Jesus asked this church to repent from the tolerance, spirit of tolerance. And the church in Pergamum, in that time, tolerated false teaching, wrong teaching. So they had spirit of tolerance. And I want to encourage you, that's another area probably we all need to repent. The tolerance. We tolerate sometimes wrong teaching. We tolerate sometimes sin. We tolerate sometimes compromises. We tolerate certain sinful aspects. We say, it's okay. It is not sin. We should not be deceived ourselves we need to turn back to the Lord and avoid every spiritual tolerance every wrong tolerance sinful tolerance or the tolerance of wrong teachings in our personal life and then church at Theodore Jesus asked them to repent from the immorality the sexual immorality and also the corruption the religious corruption spiritual corruption happened to them this was a church of compromise they compromised the holiness they compromised the walk with the Lord dear church we can't compromise we can't compromise the word of God we can't compromise our holiness we can compromise our spiritual standards dear church if we are living a life of co a compromised life probably this is an awakening call to each one of us saying that repent and come back to the Lord and then church at Sir, uh, Sardis this church was a church of complaints they were sleeping Christian they they think that they have a life they are wonderful Christian but they were dead inside there was no you know spiritual life there was no revival they were in in spiritual slumber and sleep and Lord asked them to even you know repent and come back to you dear child if I'm living in a spiritual complaint sense this is a time we need to come back with a repentance and finally the church in Laodicea this was a lukewarm church and this was a lukewarm church and God asked them repent from their lukewarmness and come back to him hallelujah dear church I want to encourage you this morning we need repent to become an overcomer yes in our Christian journey all this can come as an attack over our faith spirit of tolerance can come spirit of compromise can come lukewarmness may come spirit of complaints spiritual complaints may come hallelujah the cold love may come but we need to overcome that we need to defeat that and we how we defeat these areas these spiritual setback through repentance and coming back to the Lord conquerors are people who repent and overcome the spiritual setback see wonderful good uh, wonderful thing in these passages in these messages of for the seven church um, Jesus gave them an opportunity to come by Jesus gave them an opportunity to repent and make sure that they are ready for the coming of the Lord the same way we have the same opportunity right now we don't need to worry and feel condemned about the compromises the sins that we have in our life we only need to do one thing just come back to the Lord through a repentance hallelujah secondly we should be overcomers by having a powerful enduring faith let's read first John chapter 4 verse number 4 onwards for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith who is that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God dear church how can be a conqueror by exercising our fame hallelujah Bible says in this passage verse number four everyone who has been born of God overcome the world world is not referring here the physical creation 
the physical creation. Rather, it refers the fallen world, the fallen world of sin and suffering. So the world, the, this fallen world has sin and suffering, and we are the people who are called to overcome the sin and suffering in this world. And everyone who are born of God can overcome this world. Dear church, remember, you are a born-again person. We were spiritually dead at once, once upon a time, but gospel came and gave us the rebirth, born-again experience. Today, we are children of God. Since we are children of God, we are going to overcome this world, world of sin and world of suffering, church. Hallelujah. Then he says, you are overcoming this world. You are unable to overcome this world by exercising our faith. Dear church, through our faith, we can overcome this world. Listen very carefully. This world, I told you, has sin and suffering. How do we overcome this world? Through our faith. Through, how do we overcome the sin and suffering in this world? Through our faith. Let me just give you some insight here. If you read uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse number 15 onwards, then you will see sin operate in this world or the fallen world operate in, operates in this world through the desires of the flesh, desires, desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. I'm not explaining that, but we know we all have a battle with sin. Every day we have a battle with sin. Sometimes we are really tempted to commit sin. We know it is sin, but still we are forced within us or we are tempted within us to do sin. How do we overcome those sins? Let me remind you, dear church, first of all, we are born of God. We are born of God means we defeated sin and we cut ourselves off from the sin and we have supernatural capability within us to overcome the sin. So when you are tempted, with uh, doing a sin remember this thing who you are you are a child of god you are a born again believer you can overcome the sin hallelujah how we can do that we we have to do that by exercising faith we know faith is the way we partner with god when we trust our god lord jesus christ we are partnering with him and when we partner with him through faith he is going to give us his supernatural power within us to defeat our sin there is only one way to overcome sin church that is simply putting our faith in jesus christ sin is a power it can enslave every everyone but remember this thing when jesus christ died Died on the cross for us, he defeated the sin. We can enforce the same power, same victory over sin by simply putting our faith in Jesus Christ. When you tempt him, put your faith in God and ask the Lord to help you, give you strength. I want to tell you that you will overcome the desires of the flesh, desires of your eyes, and the pride of life, and you will defeat sin. Remember this thing, every born again believer, every child of God who has faith in Jesus Christ is supernaturally enabled to overcome every sin. Today, if you are struggling with any sin, a sin of lies or a spirit of lies or pornography or any addiction, whatever it is, dear church, I want to remind you, you can't defeat sin. You don't need to feel embarrassed. Just bring your sin, your addiction, your problem before the Lord and ask the Lord to strengthen you as you put faith in God. Jesus Christ, he is going to enable you to defeat that sin in your life. And secondly, I also want to remind you, we can overcome every suffering by simply putting our faith in Jesus Christ. John chapter 16, verse number 33 says, I have said these things to you that in me you have peace in the world you will have tribulation but take heart i have overcome the world please remember jesus never told us there is no suffering in the world in fact he told us very clearly that we will have suffering in this world we will have problems in this world but the good news is that he has overcome the world he has overcome every tribulations of this world and he's giving assurance that through him we can also overcome every kind of you know, trial and in my personal experience, I can tell you, when suffering comes to us, when struggles comes to us, when discouragement comes to us, when failures comes to us, hallelujah, you know what happened? We all raise this question, why me, Lord? Why me? The moment we ask, why me? 
we are actually shaking our own faith in God. But li listen very carefully. Faith is the only means by which we can overcome every struggle in this world. Let me just explain that point by bringing Peter's example. We know when Peter and his uh, uh, Peter and disi other disciples were traveling in the boat in a night. And it, the sea was really stormy. They were struggling for saving their life. And that night Jesus walked to them and they initially thought, it, he was a ghost and then later they realized that it is Jesus and what Peter said Peter told if you are Jesus tell me to uh, uh, tell me I can walk over the water and come to you so Jesus gave him permission and he stepped out from the boat Peter stepped out from the boat he started to walk over the water hallelujah he took few steps he took really few steps, and, but unfortunately, he took his eyes from Jesus Christ and started to look around the physical realities. He saw those storms. He saw those waves, heavy waves. He saw that darkness, hallelujah. He saw those physical realities. His faith just vanished. His faith just gone. The moment his faith is gone, he started to drown. Dear church, yes, when we open our eyes and look around us, we see discouragement sometimes. We see failures. We see struggles. We see things are not happening. But you need to understand that faith is the one thing that was holding up Peter over that water. It was not anything else. It was his faith in Jesus Christ was holding him up over those waters, all those stormy waters. So I want to tell you that we have problems in this world, but what is holding us up over those problems? It is our faith. That's why John said, through faith, you can overcome the world. Through faith, you can overcome every storm. Through faith, you can overcome every problem. But we should not just struggle with why question and just leave our faith. The moment we do that, we are preparing ourselves to be defeated by trials and problems. I want to encourage you, church, exercising faith is not an easy thing. It needs time. And as we expect, sometimes answers will not come. That's the time truly our test is faith. Uh, test, uh, our faith is truly tested whether we can trust God when we wait. When we, things are not happening the way we wanted, according to our timetable, Lord is watching over our heart whether we are able to trust Him those difficult situations. Hallelujah. If we are able to do it, and I want to tell you that you are going to defeat every struggle, every problem, and you are going to overcome that challenges. Listen very carefully how faith works. Faith is spiritual. There is no doubt about that. But when you exercise faith, its result comes on the physical world. Amen. That's why Peter could walk. His faith was purely spiritual. But when they, he exercised his faith, he started to walk over those stormy water. The same way you can see Sarah, she was not able to conceive, but faith enabled her to conceive in her an old age and we know about all those healing stories in the Bible those who put faith in Jesus Christ they received the healing healing was very physical I want to tell you today hallelujah have faith in God eventually your physical realities will change God's goodness will manifest in those struggles in those failures in those challenges as we put faith in Jesus Christ I want to tell you that we can overcome all these trials all these problems all the challenges all this discouragement all this setback by simply putting our faith in Jesus Christ that's why John said Hallelujah, we can overcome this world, the world of sin and world of suffering through Jesus Christ. And I want to just bring to you this one verse and then and move, move forward from this point. You know, many times problems come, challenges come, temptations come. You know what happened to us? We stop exercising faith. We stop fighting. Who we are? We are conquerors. Conquerors. Conquerors means we need to fight. We have a battle. We have battles with problem. We have battles with sin. We have battles with this world. We have to fight back. This is the reason Paul said like this at the end of his life. I have fought the good fight. 
I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. Dear church, we need to fight a good fight. Hallelujah. A good fight of faith. We need to preserve our faith. This journey of faith is not easy. We need to engage in battle. We need to battle with our sin. We need to battle with our suffering, trials, discouragement, failures, and sickness. But if you do that, you are going to overcome. You are going to keep your faith. And you are going to finish the race. I mean, this is a matter of faith journey. It's a marathon. We need to endure it patiently. We need to keep our faith. If you are fighting, you are going to overcome this and you're going to become a conqueror church i want to tell you that hallelujah the trials or the or the sin of this world should not stop you it should enable you to keep moving by exercising faith so that you will be truly an overcomer thirdly we can be overcomers through christ jesus christ let me just take you to uh, romans chapter 8 verse number 37 no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Hallelujah. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Dear church, just tell me along with, we are more than conquerors. Tell loudly, wherever you are sitting, look at your you know, family members and say, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Dear church, hallelujah. More than conquerors means we can exercise an overwhelming victory over every struggle every challenge we are facing in our life hallelujah amen we are more than conquerors we are not just to take the victory but we are going to take great victory that's why we are more than conquerors. and bible says no in all these things what are all those things all these things means the previous verses if you read previous verses you will see a list of things Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, so in all these struggles that come against our faith, we are going to be overcomers. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to be overcomers. And how we are going to be overcomers, it says like this, through him who loved us. Let me just say that phrase again. How we can be overcomers through him, through Jesus who loved us so much. To explain that phrase, I need to take you to cross. And on that cross, you will see the manifest love of God for each one of us. On that cross, when Jesus was crucified, dear church, remember that, hallelujah, he was taking victory for us. And he was manifesting his love for each one of us. And how can be more than a conqueror through him who loved us? When you look at the cross, listen very carefully, you will see Jesus who punished for our sin. You will see Jesus who condemned for our sin. But on the other side of the cross, you will see hallelujah through Jesus Christ our condemnation and punishment is removed and we become righteous in Jesus Christ hallelujah when you look at the cross you will see pain and suffering hallelujah Jesus is having that pain all over his body he was wounded and he's carrying the suffering and pain on behalf of us on the other hand on the other side of the cross you will see him, the hope and healing that is flowing to us the hope and peace and joy that flowing into us when you look into the cross you will see jesus who was you know uh, who was carrying all of our shame but on the other side of the cross you will see jesus who is ready to honor each one of us when you look at the cross you will see a wounded jesus christ but on the other side of the cross you know and i know hallelujah by his stripes we are healed hallelujah and we know when you look at the cross he is carrying our curse we will see a person who is carrying a curse on the cross but on the other side of the cross we know Jesus removed our curse and he's blessing each one of us when you look at the cross you will see him, Jesus who was rejected by everyone but on the other side of the cross you will see him, Jesus who adopted each one of us into the family of God and calling each one of us my son and my daughter hallelujah when you look into the cross you will see death but on the other side of the cross you will see hallelujah the risen Jesus Christ who is ready to give us 
us the gift of eternal life. This is the reason through him who loved, we will be conquerors. We will be more than conquerors. Yes, sin is a reality. Pain is a reality. Suffering is a reality. Hallelujah. Death is a reality. Shame is a reality. Rejection is a reality. But we are going to conquer all these things through Christ Jesus Christ because he already took the victory and he making us part of that victory. We are more than conquerors, Christ. Hallelujah. Let me also take you down. It says like this, who can separate you from the love of Christ? Who can separate you? None of these things can separate us from the love of Christ. This love flowing into us, no troubles, no challenges, no sin can separate us from the love of Christ. So many things can come against our relationship with Jesus Christ. Sin can come, temptation can come, unholiness can so many things can attack our relationship with Christ. But I want to tell you that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. This morning I want to remind you, you can overcome every hindrance that coming against your relationship with Christ through you know, the love that flowing from the cross through Jesus Christ. We can defeat all those hindrances. Finally, I want to share one more word and wind up. Revelation chapter 12 verse number 11. It says like this, and they have conquered him. Him means the Satan. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, uh, for they loved not, not their lives, even unto the dead. So it's very clearly says the saints will overcome demons. How? By the blood of Jesus Christ. On the cross, we know from Colossians and Philippians, Jesus defeated Satan. Hallelujah. And we are not fighting against from, from a defeated position. Rather, we are fighting against demons and Satan from a position of victory. Jesus took the victory over demons by shedding his blood, hallelujah, on the cross. And he is telling here, John is telling, we are going to conquer him. We are going to overcome sin. We are going to overcome Satan from this blood of Jesus come by the blood of Jesus Christ and the testimony of each one of us dear church I want to tell you that you are not called to be defeated by sin you are not called to be defeated by trials and problems and temptations of this world rather you are called to defeat the sins in this world you are called to be you are called to defeat the world outside you are called to defeat every temptation you are called to defeat satan the only thing that we need to do as a conquerors enforce the victory that jesus christ already achieved on the cross over all these realities dear church as i wind up let me just remind you you are an overcomer those who are going to overcome the world the sin the temptation the unholiness they will be sharing the eternal blessing hallelujah in heaven are you a conqueror we can conquer we can conquer we can overcome everything come against our spiritual life hallelujah how by repenting before the lord exercising faith and through christ jesus christ shall we say together i will be a conqueror say together church i will be a conqueror i will be a conqueror i will overcome everything I will overcome everything. Yes, time is up, but I want to sing a small chorus. I request you, please stay back for five more minutes. We will sing a small chorus and declare this victory over everything that come against our faith. Worship team, quickly come and sing this small chorus, and then we will pray and wind up. Dear church, I want to tell you, in whichever area you are struggling, hallelujah, to overcome, Bring before the Lord right now. Bring before the Lord right now. As you sing this song, enforce the victory of Jesus Christ over everything that coming against your spiritual life. Come on, church, let's sing together. Oh, Rikantala, Shakantala, Sikantala. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you are struggling with any addiction, if you're struggling with a spirit of compromise, struggling with a, any kind of spirit of tolerance, I want to ask you, dear church, come before the Lord. Come before, if you're struggling with doubt, come before the Lord right now. 
I don't know which area you need to be a really an overcomer, but bring that area right now before the Lord. You are not called to be defeated by sin. Rather, you are called to defeat the sin of, in this world through Christ Jesus. Let's sing this song and enforce the victory upon everything. Father, I pray for everyone who is part of this worship right now, Lord. Lord, I bring all those areas where we need to be an overcomer, Lord. We need to conquer. We need to overcome, Lord. We bring those areas, Lord. If anybody is struggling with addiction, any kind of sin, doubt, any of those kind of issues, Lord. Right now, Lord, you release a victory over them, Lord. You purchase our victory on the cross. Release that victory right now over people, Lord. Hallelujah. Right now, Jesus is removing fear from people's heart right now. If you have any kind of fear, bring to the Lord right now. He's removing fear from people's heart. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have any kind of anxiety, disturbance within you right now, bring to the Lord. He's releasing peace right now. Jesus, release peace right now. Peace right now. If any one of you are struggling with the stormy waters, stormy sea, wondering how I will overcome this, Wondering how I will go forward. Jesus is reminding you, put your trust in Him. Those who look to His face, their face become radiant. They're never covered by shame. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to just remind you, this church, in Holy Spirit, you are going to walk in new victories right now. Hallelujah. And I want to remind you in the spirit, if anybody is consistently defeated by sin, defeated by temptations of this world, defeated in your spiritual life, come before the Lord right now. Your spirit is inviting each one of you who are defeated in different areas of your spiritual come before the Lord. Your spiritual life is going to change. Jesus is going to help you right now. If your prayer is defeated, holiness is defeated, walking with the Lord is defeated, come before the Lord because you are born again. You can overcome all the setbacks. You are more than a conqueror. 
going to pray for those kind of people. Jesus, I pray for people who have setbacks in the spiritual life, defeated in the prayer, defeated in the holiness. In Jesus' name, release a new victory over them, Lord. We are born again people. We can overcome sin. We can overcome demon. We can overcome this world. Release right now the victory that flowing from the cross over everyone, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We are standing in the name of Jesus. We are standing in the name of Jesus. We are standing with the blood of Jesus Christ. We command every sin to leave us. We command every demonic forces to leave us right now. We speak victory over every one of us. Spiritual victories. Dear church, I want to remind you, give you this assurance. He's releasing victories, spiritual victories right now. You're no more going to be defeated. You're going to be an overcomer. You're going to be an overcomer in your spiritual life. Hallelujah. He's releasing that victory right now. Thank you, Lord Father. Releasing amazing spiritual victories over our people, Lord. Dear Jesus, we commit all of us into your hand. Your coming is so near, Lord Father. Help us to be an overcomer, Lord Father. Each one of us may live in repentance, exercise faith, stand in the name of Jesus, and enforce the victory that you already purchased on the cross on behalf of us, Lord. Thank you for hearing us, Lord. I come in this new week in your hand. Bless your people, Lord. Provide your people, Lord. Provide for your people and protect them, Lord Father. Thank you for listening us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the love of Father God, grace of Son Jesus Christ, and fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church.